Right now, a similar crime on a different campus. We're looking into the criminal past of the man arrested for randomly attacking a UW-Madison student. After hundreds of calls to the area near the Tree Lane Apartments in Madison, neighbors say they've had enough. Now their concerns are prompting action from the city. Plus, an area school district defending its decision to have larger classes, why administrators say it may help students. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. And thanks for joining us. Charlotte is off tonight. We are taking a closer look at the criminal history of the suspect in the recent Langdon Street attack. Rose Schmidt is here to explain what happened years ago in Jefferson County, Rose. That's right. This was actually in 2017. You may know 22-year-old Jerome Wils Wins excuse me, Winslow as the man who police say violently attacked a UW-Madison student last weekend. But the Jefferson County District Attorney knows him as the man she recommended serve time in prison two years ago, something he never did. 22-year-old Jerome Winslow is in jail tonight in Dane County after what Madison police call an egregious attack on a woman he appeared not to know at all on the UW-Madison campus. But let's rewind two years ago to a different case in a different county on a different campus. My case was really serious. Obviously, he had a weapon um, that he put to the back of the victim's head. District Attorney Susan Happ was the prosecutor in 2017 when court documents show Winslow robbed a man at gunpoint on the UW-Whitewater campus and a police officer became injured while chasing him. Winslow was 20 years old when it happened. And so despite the fact that he was young, from my perspective, there could be no um, other outcome or recommendation other than prison. Her recommendation was seven and a half years with 30 months initial confinement. The court sentenced him to eight years with an initial three years of confinement. But the court stayed that sentence and Winslow was put on probation. I was surprised and I was disappointed because I was worried um, about you know, protection of the public and people in the community. Fast forward to this week and people are asking why Winslow hasn't served any time at all. And, and I want to say this, no one has a crystal ball. No one can predict what defendants are going to do, and we make every effort to try to rehabilitate people in the community. I think that's very important to stress. Hap knew that Winslow had committed multiple violent crimes out of Dane County even before her case, but she says there are a number of factors DAs use to determine their recommendations. He had the fact that he was young, he had family support, he had a lot of uh, family in court, he had character letters that were presented to the court, but for me, the final thing when you balance all of those was the need to protect the public. Winslow has been convicted of three felonies total, and for his at alleged attack in Madison this week, he was arrested for violating probation. He's actually in jail right now on a probation hold. All right, thank you, Rose. Prosecutors are viewing the evidence against the man suspected of shooting and killing a Milwaukee police officer. A spokeswoman for the district attorney's office says investigators have forwarded their case to their office. Matthew Rittner was killed while serving a warrant at a Southside duplex Wednesday morning. Governor Tony Evers has ordered flags be flown at half staff in honor of Officer Rittner. The Wisconsin State Assembly is recognizing the officers who were first on the scene at the Middleton workplace shooting. The officers were the Middleton PD, Tyler Lother and Richard O'Connor, and deputies Matthew Earl and David Lambrecht with the Dane County Sheriff's Office will all be recognized as hometown heroes at an upcoming assembly session this coming Tuesday. Four people were shot last September at WTS Paradigm in Middleton. All of them survived. The shooter who worked for the company was shot and killed by police. He used a gun built from parts he obtained without having a background check. The man had been the subject of a mental health hold in another state, but that was never reported to a national database. Rising concerns about an apartment building designed for homeless families is prompting action by the city of Madison. Our Madeline O'Neill has more on what the city is telling the owner of Tree Lane Apartments on Madison's west side. Maddie? Well, police records show they've been called to Tree Lane Apartments nearly 400 times since they opened in June. Now, that can include anything happening outside the address, too, so not necessarily related to the building, along with accidental calls. But with dozens of disturbance calls and a few battery and weapons offenses included in those calls, neighboring residents and businesses have been telling the city they've had enough. Mayor Paul Soglin asked the city attorney's office to send a chronic nuisance premises declaration to Heartland Housing the Chicago-based apartment building owner. Heartland has come to the table and has met with us, but um, we wanted to be more assertive in terms of coming up with an abatement plan that we think will really address the issues. 
If Heartland doesn't follow through with the abatement plan they're being asked to make with the city, the city can fine them or bill them for police costs. Now, when asked for comment, Heartland Housing says they haven't received any notice from the city yet, but in a statement, the property owner said it's committed to providing the resources to help its residents thrive and has expanded hours of security at their sites. Well, Thank you, Maddie. Thanks, Maddie. Let's check your first alert forecast now. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? We have another bitterly cold night in store for us with temperatures perhaps as cold as 10 below zero by morning and wind chills down to 20 to 25 below zero in a few spots. But as we take a look right now at Doppler track, things very quiet across southern Wisconsin. We've had clear skies for much of the day today. Low temperatures started out just below zero here in Madison. To the north and west, temperatures are closer to 10 below zero out toward La Crosse. High temperatures generally in the single digits to around 10. Milwaukee did top out at 14 degrees, but you can see current temperatures now are already down to around zero out north and west of Wisconsin Dells. Here in Madison, we're at 6. Temperatures still around 10 in Milwaukee. But wind chills are below zero state, uh, statewide and approaching 15 to 20 below zero in our western viewing area. There's a wind chill advisory till 9 a.m. tomorrow morning for areas west of a Platteville to Lone Rock to Wisconsin Dells line. By tomorrow morning, temperatures should be down to between 5 and 10 below zero with wind chills to 20 below zero. But at least we'll see some sunshine tomorrow, bringing temperatures up to around 17. Clouds move in late in the day, and that'll lead to some snow on Sunday. That is your News 3 Now First Alert Forecast. Well, Gary, thank you. Just a reminder for Madison residents, of course, you're required to make your sidewalks passable outside your home. Sand is suggested with temperatures not getting out of the single digits today. Salt simply won't work. Madison residents typically have until noon the day after a storm to clear those walks, but we are told that will not be enforced until city crews can take care of city sidewalks, and the city is offering free sand to help. Now, here is a list of free sand locations for those of you living on the east side of Madison. Here is the list of free sand locations on the west side. Again, due to those chilly temperatures, salt will not be effective. A Sun Prairie Elementary School closed early today because of a water main break near the school. The break affected water at C.H. Bird Elementary, so the school closed just after lunch. Parents had the choice to pick kids up or to have them spend the day at another nearby school. After concern from numerous parents, leaders at the Iowa Grant School District are defending their idea to move to larger class sizes. Our Kelly Arthur spoke with school officials today and shares the reasoning behind their proposal. Started July 1st of 2018. Newly minted superintendent of Iowa Grant Schools, Stephanie Hubbard, and elementary and middle school principal, Robin Oberfall, just three years into her role, are looking to shake things up by increasing class sizes. We're just kind of throwing it out there. They believe it's key to increasing student performance in a district that performs lower, according to the state report card, compared to many neighboring districts. We want to use those resources differently. Iowa Grant School District officials did their homework looking at neighboring school districts with larger class sizes, and they say that didn't impact their grades. They say cutting class sections from four to three in grades 4K through third will free up a teacher to do other things like focus on technology or support lower achieving students. That would be another teacher that goes, um, goes into the classroom and maybe targets the lowest 25% and make sure that they have a little more instruction. We need our master teachers. We need our best. So no, it definitely isn't a lesser position. A post critical of the proposal circulating on Facebook calls to keep class sizes where they're at. Parents hear that we're going to have larger class sizes and of course the parental response is no way. But Oberfall and Hubbard say this is not a bad option, especially compared to the choices other districts in the state are facing. Can we work together and see how we can best use our staff and make the improvements that we want without having to go to the board and say we need to hire or it's a budget issue. We have staff we can use. How can we do it better? At the Iowa Grant School District, Keely Arthur, News 3 Now. And there will be more discussion about this at Monday's school board meeting at 6.30. Some Madison College students are providing children with free dental care. For the past 15 years now, students with the college's dental hygienist program have offered this free care. The program provides children with an opportunity to have their teeth examined, cleaned, and x-rayed by dental hygiene students. Promoting this free care allows the floodgates to open so to speak, and we get a lot of children in. And it's, so it's benefiting our students, it's benefiting the children who come. 
And this is the 50th anniversary of the dental hygiene program at Madison College. A little boy from Madison is apologizing to police. He called 911 earlier this month because he didn't want to go to bed at 7 o'clock. Max then wrote this letter saying, I am sorry for wasting your time. I will not do that again. Police say Max has taken full responsibility for misusing 911 and they thanked him for sending the letter. The police department replied to the the letter saying in Max's defense, a seven o'clock bedtime might seem a bit unfair. I like his accountability. <laughs> he might be ready for eight o'clock. Yeah, I think so too. Well, good job, Max. When we come back, did you hear a loud boom last night? Our cold weather is causing ice quakes in the area. And I will tell you how these quakes are formed. That story next on News 3 now at six. Well, many people heard loud booms last night, or maybe some of you were able to sleep through it. Well, if you don't know what that was by now, our Jamie Perez explains this mysterious winter phenomenon. This winter sure has been one for the books, hasn't it? If you heard a loud boom last night, you are not alone. By now, you probably know that those are what we call ice quakes, and we wanted to find out, does this ruin the foundation of your home? We wanted to ask the experts. The booming is coming from the ice, and uh, sometimes if you have a large low frequency sound, it, it could cause your own roof to flex a little bit and make it sound like the roof is causing the booming. They're technically known as cryoseisms. Feel free to Google that one, but we will just call them ice quakes for now. Here's what happens. Water freezes underground, expands, and goes boom, like this. Many of you commented on our Facebook article about it. Kim said it scared the hell out of her. Joss said it sounded like a huge crack. Noah thought he just farted really loud. Hannah inspected her house with a knife. And Jessica thought the boogeyman was in the basement. Nice. Well, many of us TV people heard it too. So terrible. I thought somebody was breaking into my house. I didn't hear it, but uh, my two children ran in the room and they were afraid from what they said was the wind. I didn't know what it was, but it sounded like... Uh, something falling on the house. It sounded or felt like a 50 pound boulder hitting the top of the house and the house just shook. It may have been an alarming sound, but nothing to worry about. Ice quakes have nothing to do with the shifting of our tectonic plates like earthquakes do, so you should be okay. You have to be really unlucky uh, to have foundation damage from an ice quake. So the experts have now spoken, now you know, now you know what ice quakes are, and thank you to everyone who participated in our Facebook article about it. You all gave us some pretty awesome laughs here at the station. Reporting from our parking lot, I'm Jamie Perez for News 3 Now. Thank you, Jamie. It was scary, but experts say that uh, 
ice quakes would have to have a huge magnitude in order to cause any foundational damage. Yeah, not much to worry about here. You'd have to have a pretty weak foundation, they say, for an ice quake to cause any damage to begin with. All right, alert days are in the forecast. The cold is going to continue a bit. That's for tonight and tomorrow. We're going to get another update on our weekend forecast. That's next on News 3 Now at 6. All right, let's talk to Gary and get the latest on these alert days. Uh, Gary, it's just the ice is just going to stick around out there with these cold temps, right? Well, when temperatures are this cold, even the salt really doesn't help on the ice. But uh, I think tomorrow we'll get to the point to where it will start working later in the afternoon as temperatures get up into the upper teens, close to 20. And then on Sunday, it'll certainly work, but we'll just add some snow on top of it. So we do have alert days in the forecast for tonight, for Sunday, and for Tuesday. For tonight, for bitterly cold temperatures, it could drop to about 10 below zero and actual wind chills down to about 10 to 20. 20 below zero, maybe closer to 25 below zero for far western viewers where there's a wind chill advisory. Occasional light snow for much of the day on Sunday. Shouldn't be particularly heavy at any point, but when all is said and done, we're probably looking at about a one to four inch accumulation. And then on Tuesday, a more significant winter storm starting Monday night and through much of the day on Tuesday brings the potential for significant snow accumulations of six inches or more. That one really bears some watching. But as we check out uh, things right now, a Doppler track, very quiet across Wisconsin. All the snow is on the other side of Lake Michigan and downwind from Lake Superior, the lake effect snows there. There's that wind chill advisory through 9 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning for areas west of a Platteville to Lone Rock to Wisconsin Dells line. Current temperatures are generally in the single digits above and below zero across Wisconsin, a little warmer in the teens closer to Chicago, but you start getting into the western portions of Minnesota and eastern Dakota's temperatures are already in the teens below zero and wind chills are between about uh, 15 and 25 below zero through much of the state of Minnesota and those wind chills continue to head in our direction. Winds won't be quite as brisk as they were last night, but temperatures will be a few degrees colder. Now, as far as the snow is concerned, uh, the USGFS com uh, computer model showing the potential for about a one to three or four inch snowfall with the heaviest amounts down toward the Illinois state line. That is through uh, midday Monday. And then the next storm system brings the potential for perhaps another six or seven inches of snow on top of that from uh, late Monday night into Tuesday. The European computer model brings the heavier snow farther to the north of Madison for Sunday with the three or four inch amounts up toward the Dell 
Isles, and you can see that uh, down toward the south, uh, the uh, lighter amounts down toward the Illinois state line. But look what happens for the storm on Tuesday. It adds another good seven or eight inches through much of the area, maybe as much as a foot in the northern parts of our viewing area. So that storm really bears some watching. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison. Skies are mostly clear right now. The high today, a balmy eight degrees, the low temperature, two below zero. And right now we're down to six with the air being calm, so no real wind chill to speak of. But as we look at weather track, the strong jet stream winds continue to bring in storm after storm at about one to two day intervals. The next one, you can see the thicker clouds back in the western Dakotas. That's what will bring us the snow for Sunday. Not a big weather maker right now, but eventually it'll tap into a little bit of moisture and draw it to the east. But in between, you can see a massive area of cold air with temperatures in the single digits above and below zero, even as far south as northern Missouri. Uh, you don't see any mild air anywhere really on the map until you get into the uh, Carolinas. That's how far away it's moving. Look at the wind chills right now between 20 and 30 below zero in the northern portion of the United States. And you can see on future track, uh, things pretty quiet overnight. The clouds start moving in later tomorrow afternoon, and then the snow should arrive late tomorrow night and then snow through the day on Sunday. This will be, you know, a more prolonged snow, but it'll be a light snow at that. And then the next storm system starts to gather strength down to the south and west, and that will be here uh, late, later Monday night into Tuesday. So our forecast includes a wind chill advisory west of a Platteville to Lone Rock to Wisconsin Dells Line through 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Look for a low temperature of 9 degrees below zero with wind chills to minus 20. Tomorrow's high temperature topping out at 17 with some clouds moving in in the afternoon. On future track, you can see those clear skies. Temperatures crashed in near 10 below zero. At least the winds won't be quite as brisk tonight. Tomorrow, high temperatures will be in the mid-teens. The clouds move in tomorrow night, and then here comes the snow for Sunday. High temperatures will be in the middle 20s. As we look at the 7-day uh, forecast, 7 to 10-day forecast, you see those temperatures back closer to normal, but snow chances Sunday, Monday, another storm system late to Thursday into Friday with some mixed precipitation and more snow toward the end of next weekend. It's a big weekend for the biggest name in Badger hockey history. We'll hear from Mark Johnson in sports. Good evening. I'm Amanda Quintana. Tonight on the News at 9, it may be too cold this weekend, but snowmobile trails could soon open up again. A safety warning from officials tonight on Fox 47.
This is going to be a special weekend for Badger hockey. Both the men's and women's teams are playing at home, but the highlight is going to be the men's game tomorrow night. That's when they'll retire the number 10 jersey of Mark Johnson, who was a great Badger player and Olympic champion many years in the NHL and a tremendously sex -sex successful Badger women's hockey coach. Johnson's strolling down memory lane this weekend. Great memories, uh, great games, great teammates, and you know you never think about evenings that are going to happen like this Saturday. So it, it's it's a lot of the above, and having my dad's name on the uh, ice uh, makes it a little bit more special. So it'll be a emotional evening. That jersey, that player, that man has represented us and exemplifies what Badger hockey is. He put us on the map. The hockey weekend in Madison starts tonight when the men's team plays Ohio State at 7 at the Kohl Center. They'll honor former assistant coach Grant Stanbrook at that men's game tonight. Then the Mark Johnson ceremony will begin about 6.30 Saturday night. Johnson's women's hockey team begins its home series Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock at Laban Arena against Minnesota State. Tomorrow's going to be a heck of a day in men's college basketball. Number two, Duke will be at number three, Virginia. Marquette hosts defending national champion Villanova, who's undefeated in the Big East. And the day starts with the Wisconsin Badgers playing at Michigan at 11 a.m. tomorrow. The last we saw the Wolverines, the Badgers knocked off the then number two ranked team in the country at the Kohl Center three weeks ago when Badger fans stormed the court after arguably the biggest win of the season so far. So do you think Michigan remembers all that? Well, you can bet they do, and that probably won't make things any easier for the Badgers tomorrow. Um, it's nothing new. We haven't uh, we played in definitely um, big arenas, um, important games. Um, we're just going to come with the same mindset that we have been um, these last few games that we've been playing, and we've been playing well. So um, we're not going to change anything that we do. It's going to be hostile. It's going to be, regardless of what happened in the previous game, it's going to be a uh, tough environment. but. Uh, we try not to get consumed with the environment. It's more about the guys in the other jerseys and what we need to do to play well. Our next Prep Mania game of the week is Thursday. Sun Prairie and Middleton running 1-2 in the Big 8 girls basketball standings with just four games left in the regular season. That game could go a long way in determining the conference champion. Hope you'll join Brof and me from, from Middleton and Sun Prairie next Thursday night live on Channel3000.com. Aaron Rodgers and Jerry Kelly are having fun, but they're gonna, going sideways on the leaderboard at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Rodgers and Kelly are 7 under through two rounds. That's tied for 85th, 11 shots out. Steve Stricker and singer Toby Keith are at four under, tied for 117th. The shot of the day, though, by Wisconsin native Tony Romo. He does drive on a hospitality stand. He's hitting about a 100-yard shot off the carpet of the hospitality stand. And watch this. Oh, Jim, I think it looks pretty good. Got a chance. Look at that. A birdie, nice. off, a birdie off the carpeting. We'll have coverage of the Pebble Beach Pro-Am tomorrow at 2 on Channel 3. They even look a little chilly out there at Pebble Beach with this, the caps on. Yeah, but not like here. No, uh, but a good weekend to stay indoors. Windchill advisory for our Western viewers for tonight. Uh, for Winchell's down to 25 to 30 below zero. And then that 10-day forecast, no chance of Sunday, Monday night into Tuesday, a storm toward the end of the week, and then some snow toward the end of next weekend. All right, Gary, thank you, and thank you for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Have a good weekend, everybody.